Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, we have a really exciting week, in my opinion. We've got Ludum Dare, Nanu on Bevy, and Bevy running on an ESP32. Starting off strong, there were a bunch of games written in Bevy that were submitted to Ludum Dare 55. The theme for this one was Summoning, and it ran from April 12th to April 15th. Game jams are always a great show, so we cover those that promoted their games in showcases this week. Nanu is a Rust creative coding framework. And up until very recently, you had to choose between Nanu and say something like Bevy with richer shader support. But more recently, Nanu has been making great progress on their Bevy plugin rework. We dive into some of the recent work in the relevant showcase later in this issue. The third unofficial Bevy meetup kicked off with two new talks this week. The first was presented by Julian who spoke about animating 3D characters in Bevy. Additionally, Julian also streams their Bevy game development on YouTube, including some of this animation they were talking about. The second talk was from Nicholas Eicher, who maintains crates such as Bevy Asset Loader. Personally, this crate makes it into just about every project that I create. They gave a talk about what they've learned maintaining Bevy Game Template, which is a GitHub template including CI/CD workflows for web, Windows, Linux, Mac, and mobile. The full archive stream is available on YouTube. On to Bevy coordinates. Bevy's camera coordinate system is right-handed and Y up, which is probably best compared to the wider ecosystem in the Bevy Cheatbook page on Bevy's coordinate system, and this image in particular. As of a couple of PRs this week, the official camera 3D docs, as well as the generate custom mesh example, include more information about the coordinate system right where you would expect to see it. There's also a new double-ended line gizmo in 11890, which brings us to DER3. Bevy uses GLAM's VEC3 extensively, but one thing that the type VEC3 cannot tell us is whether or not a value is normalized. Normalizing a VEC3 means making the length of the VEC3 1. So while we can normalize VEC3s, we can't ensure through the type system that a value we're passing in is normalized. And normalized vectors are required for some operations, so functions accepting a VEC3 that also require that normalized VEC3 create a potential foot gun and allow users to pass in invalid values. Solving this comes DER3, a new type likely coming in Bevy 0.14 that represents a normalized VEC3. It can do this by only exposing constructors to create values of the DER3 type. Once we have a DER3, we know it's normalized as a VEC3, so we can use a DER3 as the argument to functions, when those functions require a normalized VEC3. This is exactly what PR12986 is doing with transform rotate axis and transform rotate local axis. Instead of taking a VEC3, these functions now take a DER3, ensuring that we pass in only normalized values. And of course, Atlas's weekly merge train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. On to the showcases. This demo is an infinite version of Pong that plays itself. It explores the ability of Bevy ECS tile map to individually address the tile entities and takes advantage of Bevy XPBD 2D for colliders, collision layers, and ball movement. The source is available on GitHub and a video diving into the code is available on YouTube. This is a fun third-party gizmo for directional lights with mouse drag control support. It's similar to a gizmo that you might find in Unreal Engine, and as we later find out in this issue, gets its own crate release. So if you want to use this in your own applications, now you can. This week we get a Steam release for Glow, a physics-based arcade-style game where you have to avoid colliders that come onto the screen. As with many games of this style, it gets harder and harder the more that you play. And it's really nice to see Bevy games being published, not just created. In our first Game Jam entry, Path of Summoner, you take the role of a summoner tasked with saving the world from dangerous monsters. Within your dungeon, you possess a summoning circle where you can combine ingredients to summon minions. These summon creatures will aid you in combat. However, if they all die, the monsters will get you. This one is playable on itch.io. This YouTube video shows off running Bevy on an ESP32 microcontroller. Specifics are listed on the website. This is in coordination with a behavioral crate called Beat. Running Bevy on an ESP32 is somewhere that I didn't know that I would ever see it, but the ECS pattern is widely applicable, so it's not terribly surprising. The source for this one is available on GitHub. Continuous collision detection is a problem domain that addresses potential tunneling in physics simulations. Tunneling is, loosely speaking, when an object is moving so fast that its discrete steps miss collisions on its path that would have otherwise occurred. This implementation is similar to Jolt's continuous collision detection, performing time of impact queries from the previous position to determine whether collisions were missed. And if so, 
moving the bodies back to the time of impact. In the overview, we talked a little bit about Nanu, the Rust creative coding framework, and how they're replacing their backend with Bevy and making great progress. These demos show off some of what is and what could be possible. For me, the biggest takeaway from these showcases is that Nanu and Bevy are already coexisting well, and the future seems very bright. The Discord thread for this one contains a lot more information and some extra screenshots that show off what code could and does look like, including defining noise and post-processing shaders in line. In my mind, I think of Bevy's APIs as a stack of APIs. If you consider raw WGPU to be one of the lowest levels, then we've got Bevy's render graph on top of that, and we've got the material high-level API traits on top of that. Nanu seems to be building an even higher level on top of that that integrates well with everything below it, which is super exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this progresses in the future. But until then, we've got more showcases. This web-based particle editor is great for playing with values that can feed back into Bevy Inoki. You can export and import your RON settings, upload textures, and write a fragment shader live in this web editor. This showcase is an experiment to build animations through composable combinators. The code is posted in the Discord thread. And these 3,000 skinned meshes playing skinned animations all doing A-star pathfinding with plenty of FPS headroom left over. And I could swear I see wave function collapse everywhere. Or maybe it's just me, because I'm very interested in procedural generation. This showcase is a 2D prototype for future 3D implementation of wave function collapse as part of a smooth voxel world. If you're unfamiliar with wave function collapse, I've included some additional links showing off how wave function collapse can be used to generate textures. Those textures, of course, can then be used to power anything. The people behind the Compass Map Editor are working on a game using their editor and have taken advantage of the pathfinding crate in this demo, while somebody else has enabled Bevy with the ability to simulate logic gates. This logic gate simulation crate also got released later in the week. This top-down shooter is one we've seen before, and they've added persistent bullet casings as well as some audio to go along with it. So if you're interested in the audio, go check out the Discord thread. And this just absolutely beautiful demo shows skyboxes, which are the result of an automatic direct HDR to skybox, specular, and diffuse map pipeline. This results in being able to grab any HDRI for Blender and use it in Bevy immediately. It looks like the author is working on making it Bevy compatible in the way it would need to be to be merged into Bevy itself, so we'll see where that goes in the future. However, a CLI does get published later in the week, which we'll talk about in the crate releases. Next up, we've got more Game Jam submissions. The author notes that you'll want to play this one on itch.io, preferably. This one requires you to extend your pieces until they match three with the red souls on the board. When matching, you do get additional souls to use, which allows you to match further away on the board. This one is made with Bevy, a tiny dash of JS FXR, and a sprite. Next up, we've got Summoner Chess, another Game Jam submission. Summoner Chess is an auto battler where you choose your pieces and then see how they perform. Eternal Battle in the Hells or something is a Ludum Dare entry about drawing shapes. You can view some of the gameplay on YouTube that you can see here, or play it for yourself on ldjam.com. This is a short demo that showcases in-progress work on integrating Sickle UI and Bevy Cobweb. Sickle UI is a widget library built on top of Bevy UI, while Bevy Cobweb is one of many crates that provides reactivity primitives for Bevy. This demo combines Bevy Mini Buffer and Bevy Defer to start, stop, and set the speed for a cube using commands. Bevy Mini Buffer is powering that console on the bottom, while Bevy Defer is covering the async runtime. The beginnings of a 2D fighting game with 3D representation are shown in this demo. The demo is a tool to edit the timeline of the animation playback position and location information, assuming the game is running at 60 FPS. The animations are currently from Mixamo, which is a database of animation information, but that's just for prototyping purposes, and these will be changed out in future versions. And of course, where would we be without multiplayer wizard fireballs? Bevy Quinet powers this multiplayer demo. It uses an authoritative server with client-side prediction. This powers wizards throwing fireballs and shooting bows back and forth. And that's it for the showcases this week. It's time to look at the crate releases. Bevy Sun Gizmo is the crate that we saw earlier which allows you to visualize and control the direction of directional lights. It's very similar to, again, a tool found in Unreal Engine and may be familiar to users of that engine. Bevy Logic got its first release, which we saw in a showcase earlier. This allows you to simulate logic gates and signals inside of Bevy. 
proving again that the Bevy engine is not just for games. Bevy Koto is a crate that allows you to use the Koto scripting language. The Koto scripting language is a lightweight scripting language for Rust applications, and this release comes with a nice demo video over on YouTube. So if you're curious as to what this could actually do for you, maybe go check that out. And does asset management have you tangled in knots? Do you wish there was a clear, robust way you could structure your game data? Wish you knew how to design content formats that you can just hand off to your game designers to populate? Well then Leafwing Manifest might be what you are looking for. Leafwing Studios, of course, are also the creators of Leafwing Input Manager, which is one of my favorite input management crates. And Leafwing Manifest fits into a style of work called asset-driven development, or at least that's what I'm calling it for now. The overall idea is that you might have people working in different other programs, things like Excel with CSVs, and allowing people who are familiar with those applications to work in those applications and produce an asset that you can then take into your game engine to then spawn objects and functionality is a really powerful pattern. For my personal usage, I'm always on the lookout for something that's just a little bit more powerful than bundles. So I'll be spending some time digging into this this week. Speaking of being a little bit more powerful than bundles, Default Constructor got its first release this week, which is a set of macros for creating pseudo DSLs that construct structs through default construction and field conversion. This crate overall is an attempt to make constructing nested bundles easier. There are some code examples right in the documentation page, so take a look and see if it works for you. Bevy Magic FX got a release this week. Bevy Magic FX enables defining mesh-based visual effects in RON files and loading them into Bevy. It can support scrolling texture animation like waterfalls and frame-based animation like explosion. Bevy iOS Alerts also got its first release this week, which is a Rust crate and Swift package to easily integrate iOS's native UI Alerts API into a Bevy application. This one is being used in production by Zulitaire. And if you liked the skyboxes and HDRI images we were looking at earlier, you're in luck because Bevy Skybox CLI has been released. The repo includes a CLI tool to do it yourself, as well as an example project showing you how to do it. Bevy iOS Review also got its first release this week. This is a Rust crate and Swift package to easily integrate iOS's request review API into a Bevy application. If you've ever wanted to pop up a please rate it on the app store dialog, this is the crate you're looking for. And for our educational section today, Trent gave a talk at Rust Sydney on Bevy, where they take a spreadsheet analogy approach to explaining Bevy's ECS. And that's it for this week. As always on the website, we have all of the pull requests that were merged this week. If the overview wasn't enough for you, as well as contributing sections, PRs that need review and issues that need reproductions. That's it for me. I'll catch you next week. Have a great rest of your week.